Hey there guys, welcome back to another episode of Monster Super League. It's your boy Odin, and today I am finally here to bring you guys my brand new Astrogem farming guide. And of course we're going to go ahead and talk over uh, the best areas where you can farm during exotic events, as well as every day uh, throughout the month when we are not doing an exotic event. Um, essentially I want to make this guide uh, for a lot of free to play players so that you guys can basically uh, play the game and continue to enjoy it despite the fact that sliming has been nerfed here in the last uh, essentially two months um, and uh, just to show you that it is still possible uh, to get anywhere between uh, you know 14,000 and 18,000 astrogems a month given the fact that you participate in a lot of the login events daily events quests and things like that um, so without getting too too crazy into it I'm going to put up my little spreadsheet here and show you guys uh, how I keep track of my uh, gold than my spending as far as astrogem goes um, and I kind of made this list here just so that um, I'd be able to show you guys exactly where all the astrogems I'm making is coming from uh, so first off we're gonna have a couple categories here free being uh, gems that you can get via the daily quests the daily ad the weekly quests the monthly quests um, and of course arena clan battles and from capture um, and um, you know that includes variants as well and then, of course, other sources that you guys may be looking at, such as uh, Tower of Chaos and things like that, which, uh, of course, I've also broken down into this list as well. Uh, so without getting too crazy here, I'm going to explain kind of how I labeled it off. So um, roughly, we have about 3,000 free gems uh, that come from, again, the, the daily quests, the daily ad, the weekly quests, and the monthly quests. Uh, the daily quests, essentially, if you count it up for 30 days, uh, I think this month, March, was 31 days, so I had 930, but overall, over 30 days, it's 900. Uh, for the uh, daily ad, uh, if you do the 30 days, it's 600, uh, but give and take a couple of random uh, rolls here, you know, because you can get 20 to 200 astrogems from the daily ad, you can kind of topple on a little extra every month. I ended up getting lucky on particular days, uh, so like here I had 100 astrogems, and this other one I had 80, 40, but the majority of them are going to be 20, um, you know, a couple odd ones like 60 as well. Um, I didn't really need to go into the uh, roles and, you know, specifically break down how much percentages it is, but 20, 20 astrogems is generally around like, you know, 60% of the, the time that you're going to get it. So, of course, the game is biased um, towards uh, giving you less astrogems, but overall you can count from 900 from the daily uh, log in and then uh, the daily quests and then uh, th another 600 from the ads and then of course every Monday that um, is a new week as long as you do the um, uh, the daily bingo on Mondays you can get a hundred astrogems for free which amounts to four, 400 from there the weekly quest is 120 per week so that's total is 480 and then the monthly completion quest for all the quests is 300 now what am I referring to when I talk about those quests here I'm referring to these so the daily quests here if you look at it, I've already completed them all I just didn't collect them so you guys can see if you do the daily quests so feed an astronaut fruit five times send energy to friends five times uh, use 30 energy, Starstone Dungeon, enter it once, Elemental Dungeon once, uh, do an Astromon League, uh, Gem Upgrades three, you know, uh, try to catch an Astromon three times. That gives you 30 Astrogems a day. You do that every day for 30 days and you'll get yourself uh, 900 free Astrogems. Now going on to the weekly here, weekly is 120 if you complete all the quests, that's 250 battles, uh, play the gold dungeon 3 times, evolve 3 astromons, uh, try to upgrade gem 60 times, and play the golem dungeon 10 times. So really easy quests to complete every week um, since you'll be doing them uh, most of those anyways. So the monthly ones, unfortunately, I already collected them uh, for the, this month. Uh, but if you uh, complete a daily quest, you get a, a gleam. Um, if you ascend two astral months to five star or higher, you get a highlight um, three star egg. And then if you complete all weekly quests, you get 300 astral gems. So uh, you do uh, 50 Astromon League battles and you end up getting a skill book. Uh, I definitely recommend you guys to do uh, your uh, arena battles every week, not just because you get arena points, but also because you can use uh, those points to buy Gleams, which will, of course, help you evolve most of your Astromons to evolution level 3 or 2 if you're just barely beginning. Uh, and then, of course, the last one is make a 12-plus 12 12 gem, uh, and that's 300,000 gold. 
most people like myself will grab like a really crappy one star gem that we picked up from like Phantom Forest and just, you know, level it up to a 12. It only costs you like 40,000 gold. And so then you'll end up with a profit of around 260. Um, but there's other ways that I will break down, of course, as far as the gold and how you guys are going to do that as well. Uh, my main goal here with this guide is basically to show you guys the most efficient way to make astrogems as of today for 2220 is actually through the uh, capture event. Capture event, um, given that you run the story mode, um, you know, so much throughout the month, you're actually going to make up quite a few gems just from catching astromons and from releasing them and things like that. So from capture this past month, I made 2410 that that's including legendaries as well as uh, capturing just rares and variants of all types uh, from each specific stage um, and then of course added on to those is also the um, uh, ones that you get from sliming and then of course the gems that you get from releasing said mons that you've captured as well uh, so right now you know calculating total between released and capture you're looking at an additional 30 hundred three thousand or so uh, gems that you can get every month so three thousand plus the original four thousand that you'll get from sliming that's around you know seven thousand astro gems right there uh, so you know of course the catch rate is going to be varying depending on how, what level you are and you know whether or not you've chosen to level up that area for capture um, but uh, I will go ahead and tell you guys here on my next little sheet which are the best areas to uh, level up uh, and increase your chances so that you guys can basically become efficient at, at farming astromon so that you can release them and uh, gain your gold and your astrogems like I have every month so I've also um, added in here this used uh, tab which basically tells me exactly how much I've spent in energy refills um, for the month um, and I've also calculated how much energy you get every month for free uh, which I'll go ahead and obviously go into that as well so um, another way to get gold or astrogems excuse me it's going to be from ascension meaning you're taking your three four five star mons and ascending them to six star mons um, each ascension now costs you a million gold uh, I ascended nine astromons this past month to six star which means I gained an additional 900 astrogems um, ascension is not the most efficient way to make astrogems prior to the slime nerf it used to be you know a thousand um, gold would give you roughly you know 300 astrogems um, unfortunately that's no longer the case now you only get a hundred or so per million gold uh, so pretty bad trade-off I still think they need to increase the sliming rate from 4,000 to you know um, I would say at least 8,000 so 2,000 a week to make it a little bit more free to play friendly but you know 433 is not just about to give up a lot of their uh, earnings uh, so they're going to keep it the same way that it is now so um that's as far as i'll get into the the astrogems um just know that you'll get a lot of them from uh, the free daily logins you'll get a lot of them from the daily quests as long as you complete them the weekly quests the member login and then the monthly quest so if you log in every day essentially and you do the little quests, you'll get around three thousand astrogems a month right there so three thousand plus your sliming mons will give you around four thousand now um, after releasing those mons you'll get around 630 and again your ascension is going to be varying depending on what mons you've ascended for that month and whether or not you had the gold to do it so i basically went through and checked how much gold you get uh, from the, watching the daily as well as doing the daily uh, gold dungeon so from the daily gold dungeon you're looking at around 9 million gold for free um, given that you do the dungeon itself um, around 9 million um, this is how much I earned from running the story mode last uh, month during March basically from uh, a period between uh, end of um, uh, February to March so around 18 million gold from running the story um, and then uh, from releasing mons I gained around 8 million or so so definitely a really good to, way to get extra gold is to release uh, the normal mons that you'll catch during the story um, but all in all I ended up with a surplus of um, 18 million or so and uh, I've kind of divvied up my my uh, tallies here to add and subtract depending on you know what I made for that particular uh, month um, and I've kept of course a log for other months as well so but anyways continuing on 
as far as I know, as far as I've tested it out, the best way to get Astro Gems right now is through uh, the story mode. Uh, because one, you'll get gold, which you can use for sliming. And then two, you'll get um, Astro Mons, which you can release to get Astro Gems as well as gold that you can use for sliming. So all in all, the best place to get new Astro Gems nowadays is actually from running the story mode and capturing every Astro Mon that you see whether it's variant, whether it's a rare or a normal type uh, three-star mon. Uh, the legendaries, of course, you'll run into those every single month. Um, you know, whether or not you catch two or three or four or five depends on how many runs you've done and how lucky you are. There's been months where I've only ever caught like, you know, five or six. And then there's months like this last month where I caught like almost, what, 15, 16 of them. So that will vary, uh, but just know that the catching a legendary will give you 50 astro gems, and then catching a legendary variant will give you 100 astro gems. So that's another way that you guys can get uh, some extra gold, and that's tallied as well into my capture here. Uh, so from capture this past month, I made 2,410 astro gems. Now, I've decided to exclude uh, four star rebirths and five star rebirths mainly because I know a lot of you guys may not be able to do those. So, my tally here, my 16,000 Astro Gems a month that you can get, does not include the rebirths that you will do every month. Um, because personally, for me, I have almost every mod in the game except for light and darks uh, so therefore um, I basically uh, feed my uh, nat force to 433 gods for more astro gems um, and there's just kind of like extra income that I can use every month and uh, I don't mind doing that because I don't need uh, any particular other mods that I've already gotten to evo 3. I know for a lot of you guys who are new you will not be doing that or, and you may be very uh, rarely doing the rebirths mainly because you, you're either new and you don't have that many monsters to feed into the rebirth or you're you know kind of set on a particular mon that you want and uh, you don't have enough mons to feed for it um, and therefore you're going to be saving them for that particular mon whenever it comes around so that's the reason why i excluded the rebirths um, but that is another way that you guys can get an extra couple of gems um, i think i did like um, nine rounds last time so i ended up getting like 1500 astro gems uh, so basically, I think I did like, you know, three mons times five. I think I ended up feeding somewhere around 150 nat fours uh, to make 1500 gems. So, you know, again, unless you're somebody like me that's been playing the game for a really long time, um, rebirths are not going to be a, a source of income or, or astro gems for you. Um, but for somebody like me, they are. So again, 16,000 Astro Gems is what you can make basically every single month. Um, that's from releasing Mons, ascending Mons, um, doing your capture, your sliming, and then of course we're going to now talk about the clan battles and the arena. So the way that uh, the arena and the Champions League are going to basically be is just depending on how much effort you put into them and then where exactly you end up on the leader bracket at the end of the week. Uh, clan battles is going to be dependent on your clan and the type of clan that you're in and how high you can actually um, get in your Titans battles. So we're just going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, rewards here really quick. So first we're going to do the arenas. Um, so for the arenas, there's actually two different types of arenas right now. There's the Astromon League and the Champions League. The Astromon League is essentially your normal weekly uh, arena in which you'll, you know, select your opponent here, go through it, and then you'll get, you know, some uh, medals here, which you can use to exchange for your Gleam. Um, and then, of course, the rewards are listed here on the bottom. So depending on where you end up at the end of that week, you'll end up getting X amount of rewards. So if you place Platinum and you only went to Tier 2, you only get 160 Astro Gems. For the base player, even if you're new, as long as you run like five battles a week, you'll end up getting close to 100 Astro Gems. So that's just from me uh, talking to other players. I'm on Discord as well. You're more than welcome to join my Discord. Um, but if you do just the bare minimum five battles a week, you'll get around uh, 100 Astro Gems. So not bad. Um, for most new players, they're going to start out here. But, you know, you look at 500 points, you're like, what? But you already actually start at 500 points. So something to take note. Uh, for me, my, personally, I end up being usually in Masters or in Heroes by the end of the week. Uh, of course, they give you 10 tickets a day. And you can watch your, your daily ad to get set tickets. Um, but essentially, what I recommend people to do is to only do the random match. 
And when you do the random match, um, you'll, let me see if I just click it here, it'll give you 15 uh, arena points and then four um, medals, which you can use for uh, exchanging gleams and uh, eggs and such uh, other rewards. So depending on where you are in the week, you'll get X amount of gems. So for me personally, you know, if I look at my sheet here, my uh, week one, I was in Masters 2, so I ended up getting... 425 Astro Gems, and if I go here to my uh, list, Masters Tier 2 is 425. My Week 2 is Heroes 1, which is 700. So it just depends on how lazy I am or how lazy you are to, to see where exactly you're ranked. So, you know, th that amounts actually for a decent amount of Astro Gems every month. Um, and if I look at my arena, I'm looking at an extra uh, 2,200 Astro Gems just from, you know, doing bare minimums. Um, you know, I never really go into um, Challengers or Champions League, um, but I try to stay between Masters and Heroes. Um, and that, that really is pretty doable as long as you just do the uh, use your tickets to do the random match. So, you know, it refreshes every 10 minutes. Don't waste your time too much with these other teams unless you know you can beat them. Um, in which case, just do the random match. Even if you lose, you'll end up getting a couple of, uh, you know, points, basically. So just something to keep in mind. So um, that is just from the uh, Astromon League. That's how, much, how many Astro Gems I made. So that was around 20, 2,200 point Astro Gems there just from the uh, regular uh, arena. Oops, opened up the wrong PowerPoint there. So then from Champions League, uh, this past month I did, I made 700 Astro Gems in which I placed uh, uh, Challengers 1. Now if you look at the Challengers Arena uh, reward system, they're actually a little bit more than you'll get from uh, the regular arena. And um, basically... Uh, it's it's way harder. You'll need three teams, so you'll need to have more mods to do it. But you know these are the type of rewards that you can get if you place anywhere between like you know challengers, masters, or heroes. You're looking at an extra thousand to do two thousand astro gems. Um, you know for that month, in addition to whatever the astro gems you did from your other arena. Um, challengers arena is a little more difficult again you know if I click on this here you guys will see you actually need three teams to go off of, uh, your particular opponent so this is more for like the advanced um, you know players if you've been playing for like you know at least a couple of months six months or so I typically do recommend players though to just go ahead and do the Champions League even if you just set up a defense team um, you know even if you're getting losses or whatnot you're still going to be getting the rewards you know, bare minimum, as long as you join, if you're, you know, basically getting zero points over here in bronze, you're still getting 60 Astro Gems. So just go ahead and put your defense team up. I don't care if you're level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Just pick some random mons, even some slimes. Throw them in here, because every time you'll get beat, you'll at least be getting some, uh, you know, Astro Gems. And who knows, maybe there's that guy who's out there who's really nice who just decides to, uh, you know admit defeat and lets you win and you move up a couple points and then next thing you know you've got an extra 200 Astro Gems for the month. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, so that's another way that you'll get um, some decent amount of gold. So again, I ended up being in the Champions League, so I ended up getting 700 Astro Gems last month. Uh, 21, uh, 2200 from the arena, that almost equals 3000 Astro Gems there just from the arenas. And uh, that's uh, pretty good uh, considering you can add that up to your uh, capture uh, amounts as well as your released amounts. Um, and then of course you're free. So all in all in total, after you do all of the arena and the champions, you know, you're looking at 3,000, and then you're basically going to be looking at clan battles, which is the uh, other method of um, getting uh, some Astro Gems here. I'm clicking on the wrong stuff here. Here we go. So let's see if we go into the clan battles. Perfect, it's about the end. Uh, let's see, so region defense is essentially Titans. Um, to participate in Titans, you need, um, basically eight astromon on the front row and eight astromons in the back row so a total of 16 um, and then depending on how high you end up you know with your clan mates uh, defeating the titans you'll get a certain amount of rewards so if you click on details here and you go to the rewards um, if your clan is able to beat a boss above level 70 you'll get 8,500 or 8,750 um, astro gems that's for the whole entire clan Level 100, 10,000 Astro Gems. Level 120, 11,250. 11, um, and of course, level 
140 is 12,500. Uh, now, depending on where you rank, as far as your damage dealt to the Titans, uh, you'll get a certain percentage of the rewards, which is listed here on the right. 8% of reward goes to number one, 4.8 to number two, and 4% to number three. Um, you know, depending, even if you just log in and your guild gets or your clan gets to, you know, level 100, as long as you participated once, you're going to be getting some Astro Gems. I think that 0.64% of, you know, 10,000 Astro Gems is still 64 Astro Gems. So keep that in mind. You know, it's just extra Astro Gems that you can get um, every month for free. And then, of course, you'll get your medals, which you can ex use to exchange for uh, uh, clan rewards, such as the uh, Dark and Light Siegfried, or, or the Dark Siegfried, or um, not Siegfried, um, what's his, yeah, the, the RBG Siegfrieds, not the Light and Dark. So that's just another way. Uh, particularly um, for a lot of new players, it's a really good way to get some extra free Astro Gems. Uh, myself, I usually place like second, third, fourth, fifth. So I end up getting a little bit more rewards, 4.8. I think uh, the last boss that we beat was uh, level 100. So I think we ended up getting somewhere around 480 Astro Gems for me because I placed second. But um, I keep that you know list in here as well. So it calculates for me how much I, I made for that particular week. Uh, so from Clan Battles last month, I made 1,840 Astro Gems which is again added to the Astro Gem count here. So another really good way to get extra uh, Astro Gems is just by joining a clan, uh, you know, doing a, at least one Titan battle for that week um, and just getting some of that, um, the rewards. Uh, the clan conflict unfortunately does not give you rewards, but it does take into account some extra rewards such as the Poseidon Stones and then more uh, clan um, medals, which you can use again to exchange for Astromon, um, and uh, other perks like Astro Gems from the roll. Uh, let me see if I can go to the uh, shop here. Here it is. So those are the rewards that you can get from doing the uh, clan battles. You know, you exchange your medals basically for some of these. Um, and then, of course, I have seen people actually get a thousand Astro Gems from rolling the medals. Um, I'm, I, I like to use my Siegfrieds for uh, rebirths, so I usually don't... Um, buy the the lucky box but um you know when i finally have all the sig frees i need i i will probably start doing that um so that's only on for older players but that's essentially it for the astro gems part of it you know keep in mind you'll be getting at least nine thousand gold uh just from your daily logins and doing the um regular um gold dungeon um and then of course the uh, another way that you can get more gold is by doing the daily ad. Um, this one I did not add into my list, mainly because it's totally random. Um, you can get between fifty to three hundred thousand gold, uh, you know, per roll per day. You know, if you really did three hundred thousand gold for thirty days straight, you're a god. Uh, but you know, if you don't, then you're basically like me, where I'm just pulling fifty thousand every every roll. Um, I'm gonna pause the video real quick, watch this ad, and then uh, see how much we get. Okay, so it looks like for today we got 200,000 astro or gold, so uh, that's actually a pretty good roll. I do notice that at least with the l lucky, gold, lucky gold box, you do end up getting anywhere between 100 to 250 or sometimes 300,000 a little bit more often uh, than you will uh, doing the uh, astro gems um, daily ad. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again and we're going to do this one here and see how many astro gems we get today. And okay, surprise, surprise, we got 20 Astro Gems for today. Uh, so again, that's another reason why, um, you know, you'll get really skewed numbers as far as like, you know, your uh, daily um, ad revenue, depending on how many Astro Gems, uh, you know, you happen to roll for that day, that will definitely increase your chances um, as you go throughout the month um, of gaining some extra gems. But again, um, you can get 100 or 80 or 60 but I've noticed there's no um, odd numbers in there. They're all evens. So you're either getting a 20, a 40, a 60, or a 100. Um, I have not seen the 200 yet or anything above. Uh, I think when I, the ads first came out, I did see a 120. Um, but uh, I haven't seen anything else above that, like 140 or 160 or 200. 
Uh, so that's just me personally. Uh, but just make sure that you guys are doing those every single day. You know, it's just another way to get free Astro Gems. You'll get 20 from your daily here. And then, of course, the uh, daily quests. Um, you'll get 30 from there. I'm just going to go ahead and collect these all here. And then we're going to move on to the reason why you guys are here, which is um, essentially how to make your Astro Gems, how to get them. And again, that's through the capture. Um, so if you look at my little spreadsheet here, last uh, in the last month, I caught actually quite a few Mihos, Vivians, Yetis, Mishas. Uh, and those are the monsters that are going to give you 20 Astro Gems, that f regardless of whether or not they're variant. As long as you catch one of them, they're going to give you 20 Astro Gems. So that's the Mihos, the, the Vivians, etc. Which, um, if you go to your map, let me just get to it really quick. So let's look at Mirage Ruins here. If you look at the capture here, uh, the Wood Miho is on Extreme. Uh, the uh, I believe the Water one is on Hard. Yes, the Water one is on Hard. And then the Red one is on Normal. So as far as captures go, um, let me take a look here. I kind of made a list of the areas that where I personally tested out are the best to farm. So for levels 1 through 20, you're going to farm at Mirage Ruins 9. So... That's essentially this one here on normal at number nine. Um, you're going to have to start at Phantom Forest, work your way all the way to Mirage Ruins. But I believe once you get to Mirage Ruins, then you have to go back to Phantom Forest and beat everything on a hard again. Um, so just keep that in mind. But if you go all the way to Mirage Ruins on normal, you know, from one to 20, you can just essentially farm number nine, which is the extra XP bonus, which will help you level up your Astromon as well as gain you, um, you know, those rares and uh, super rares that you can catch as well as the legendaries. Uh, so, you know, that's essentially the best place for levels one through 20. It's just going to be to get to Mirage Ruins and whether normal, hard or extreme, do that dungeon in uh, the number nine uh, XP bonus uh, stage. Now for levels 20 through 30, uh, the best stage to farm XP, like if you guys are going for uh, leveling your astronauts as well as gaining um, player XP, uh, it's going to be Pagos Coast 6 uh, or Pagos Coast, depending on how you call it. And it's going to be the same experience bonus level. Um, and you're going to want to run that on either hard or extreme. I believe once you finish Mirage Ruins, you're going to go to Pagos Coast and go all the way to Star, Star Sanctuary. Um, but I always tell people go back to Pagos Coast or Pagos Coast um, mainly because uh, stage six is just super fast. Uh, it only takes you about 35 to 40 seconds to complete. So even if you're running, you know, Stark Sanctuary on hard or extreme, these ones are going to take you a little bit closer to like a minute or so to run. Um, and they only give you about like 850 more experience than Pagos Coast will. So just go ahead and run, you know, Pagos Coast either a hard or extreme. Uh, between levels 20 through 30 and that should get you uh, you know to level 40 or 35 and 40 a little bit quicker for levels 30 through 40 um, that was level through 20 for pay 20 through 30 for pagos coast uh, for levels 30 through 40 uh, it's going to be um, oh i did i forgot to tell you guys so the best stage for levels 20 through 30 for gold is actually magma cracks 4 um, and so if you look at magma cracks here, you go to stage four It's the gold stage. Uh, the reason why I say this stage is the best for gold is because all the monsters here are going to be fire. And it, of course, uh, you know, you're looking at the uh, wood uh, or the water um, arch here. Um, but uh, he's pretty easy as long as you have like a Mona or like, uh, you know, two Monas, for example. Just because either on hard or extreme, he's going to take some pretty hard hits from you. It's not going to take you very long to kill him. So uh, that's it for the level 20 through 30. For level 30 through 40, again, Glacial Plains 8 and Glacial Plains 8 is going to be for both XP and gold. Um, and the reason why I say Glacial Plains 8 is best for you guys is because of the speed factor. So if you look at Glacial pl Plains, whether it's on extreme, Every monster here is water. Now, if you raise the Mona, that's like your ultimate death right there. You know, you look at uh, the hard mode, again, it's wood. Uh, you know, you go back to normal, and normal is still water and wood. So not particularly the best place to farm if you are on a uh, Mona team, like, you know, if you're using four Monas or something like that. Um, but the best stage here is going to be stage eight. 
And that's because one stage eight is only going to be the seals and the seals don't have any like crazy like attacks like they stun and their stun is 60% chance so it's like really easy to get by uh, them and see the water one has zaps so if you run to one stage where you run and encounter three seals it's going to be really easy and that's the other reason too uh, speed is basically everything in the game and how fast you can finish the uh, story mode is actually the best way for you to level up I mean, you know, counterintuitive, um, but stage 8 here, even though it's not the experience bonus, will give you the most XP, mainly because you'll be able to finish it a lot faster than you will stage 13. Um, so for levels uh, 30 to 40, uh, farm the gold stage in Glacial Plains, you'll run into a lot of Yetis, a lot of uh, Wendigos, which you can use for uh, the uh, Dark Merlin uh, fusion and um, you know definitely a really good place to farm uh, some mats and stuff like that for your dark stones so that was another reason why the glacial plains i believe is going to be the best stage between uh, level pl for players level 30 to 40. Uh, so players above level 40 to 65 you guys should be able to do terrestrial rift um, and i believe you can actually finish terrestrial rift once you're level 40. Um, terrestrial rift uh, i recommend a lot of you you know higher end players who've been playing the game for a while now to actually run stage 11 um, and again stage 11 has uh, the um, fungor here I believe it's Mil mildew yep so all he has is taunt uh, the wood um, Chiroptan or whatever you want to call him here has defense down you know these are wood mons so they're gonna be really easy for you to kill at this point especially in the game if you're level 40 I've recommended to at least get one fire draka and if you have one fire draka you can blow through the stage super quick whether it's on normal hard or extreme you can bro blow through uh, level 11 on terrestrial rift really really quickly much quicker than you will level 13 uh, and if you look at the difficulty, especially on extreme, uh, this is the stage that I prefer to run the most um, because I can use three fire trackers and one monster that I'm going to level um, and I can get them to basically from zero to 60 within like, you know, four hours of just farming number 11. Not to mention the fact that you'll actually be running into uh, the beetles, uh, which will, uh, of course, are going to be needed for the uh, light um, uh, Hohenheim uh, fusion you can run into the Mishas which give you 20 astro gems per capture and of course your Phoenix which you can use for rebirths as well as releasing to get more astro gems so that's the uh, other best stage uh, to farm um, to, you know between those levels uh, 40 to 65 so you can get some extra gold and XP um, and th the reason why I say terrestrial rift 11 is actually better for gold as well too is because you'll be doing a lot faster runs compared to number eight which has two water mons and a wood one uh, so again most new players if you're new and you happen to stumble upon the uh, draka rebirth uh, just go ahead and try to you know sacrifice some not some of your nat fives for one the only nat fives that i would say you don't you shouldn't sacrifice as a new player is going to be the fire arthur uh, the fire valkyrie uh, perhaps a water purse um, but if you have anything else you can probably just go ahead and feed it to the 433 gods uh, and just pull yourself a fire draco or two um, i did that when i first started playing the game and i still pat myself on the back for doing that you know it kind of sucked getting rid of my nat fives but it did bring me three fire trackers which allowed me to continue throughout the game super super quick uh, so that's essentially the thing that you want to do so um, that covers levels 1 through basically 65 as far as the best places to um, farm your gold as well as your astromon. Um, and uh, of course that covers the uh, capture portion of uh, your astrogems there. Because every time that you catch, you know, let's say that you're farming glacial plains here. You're going to encounter, you know, a yeti and you'll get 20 astrogems. If you run slumbering city, you'll run into a fivian and you'll get, you know, 20 astrogems. And of course, if you catch them variant, they're going to give you 30 astrogems. The Shelly here will give you 20. Um, and um, just to show you guys, uh, you know, the Water Siren, for example, uh, is a three-star mon. This is this one here, the Water Siren. Um, she, if you catch a variant of her in uh, the uh, Arya Lake region, let's see if I can... Here it is. If you catch a, a variant siren, 
um, in the Aria Lake region, she'll still give you 20 astrogems. So I save these here just to show you guys that you can actually catch a variant slime and they'll still give you five astrogems. Or you can catch a variant wood lat, which is, you know, a level two star astromon, and she'll still give you 10 astrogems. So, you know, just capturing here, I have 75 astrogems or so. So that's another great way to get some more astrogems. And it's just from doing your capture events and just making sure that after you capture one of those months, you got, go back to the main screen here to collect your astrogems. Now for the uh, weekly quest here, that's 120. So uh, if you do that four times, that's 480 astrogems that you can get a month, um, essentially just from doing the quests and, and doing that type of stuff. So another really easy way to get some more astrogems. Um, I know that for a lot of players, it's going to be like, okay, you're making all these astrogems, but where's that energy going? You know, where is that energy coming from? Again, that's from your basically your free energy that you're getting. So just by logging in every day and doing your, your daily ads here for your energy count, you can get 300 energy and then you'll get another extra 50 by sending um, you, some energy to your friends. So if you have 50 friends, as long as you keep 50, you can send 50 energy and you'll also get uh, some astrogems that way as well. Um, so once you've sent your, your friends energy five times, they'll give you one astrogem. Uh, so that's another way to get an extra 50, 50 astrogems, you know, basically every five days. Um, and I did not tally that into my uh, account here because that's just like added um, gems that you have to do something particularly every single day in order to get it. Uh, but that's something that everybody should be doing to get 350 energy every single day. So that's uh, where I got my total number here, 10,630 energy, comes just from doing your 350 a day times 30 days. Um, the 6,530 energy that I have here, that is coming from, uh, that, that energy is coming from um, energy found on the ship. So if you look at your little glowing things of course a lot of you guys are going to have the normal ship i purchased mine so i ended up getting the uh, hanamura um and this one here if you select your gold and you know basically you collect your little um treasure here on your ship you'll get 10 10 energy kind of like how you just saw that there um and if you do that like you know essentially it resets every hour so if you do that every hour or so that you're playing you're going to get some energy back so like for example i just got 20 energy there just by collecting the um, um the treasures from the ship and if you collect you know let's say that throughout the day you know you're going to end up with a, a pretty decent amount and of course friends will also give you some energy as well so count on an extra 50 energy so it's exactly 400 free energy that you'll get as long as your friends give you some every single day and then uh, the 6530 that i have here are all coming from the daily uh, collecting from either uh, the ship as well as the uh, login event. If you look at the login event here, it gives you 25, 35, 30, and 40. So you're looking at an extra 120, 100, yeah, how about 120 extra um, energy, 150 extra energy a month that you can get just by logging in, uh, you know, basically for the consecutive 25 days. So that's something else that you can do to get uh, some extra energy. But all that energy there that I have, I essentially just spent it running uh, quests. Um, and for a lot of players, you're going to try to figure out where is the most efficient place that I can use my energy. So, you know, total you're looking at 16,000, 17,000 or so energy. Um, and then, of course, once you finish up that energy, you're going to need to buy some. So that's why I subtracted 1,200 astrogems because I used 1,200 astrogems to refill energy. So I bought an extra 7,200 energy last month. Um, and uh, essentially, the best efficient way for you guys to use that energy is to actually run the normal stages. Uh, what, do I, what do I mean by that? Like, it, Once you're up to a certain player level, like me, I'm level 58, I no longer need to just run, let's say, the hardest level to get gold or experience. I'm mainly looking to capture mons. So even as a new beginner player, I'm going to tell you guys to try to allocate a lot of your energy to go towards the uh, lower levels. The reason why is because it only costs three energy to do the lower levels. And during exotic farming areas, most of those rates up are going to be you trying to find exotics. Um, so therefore, I recommend Aria Lake 
Mirage Ruins and Pagos Coast at normal at 3 energy. Um, you'll get some Lightstone materials. Aria Lake and Mirage Ruins are actually my favorite ones to run. I run into a lot of exotics there um, during the capture festivals. Uh, I know Xiangxi is the next um, Astramon for uh, the capture fest coming up. Um, but the reason why I like to run it in normal is because one, yes, you'll have more runs to encounter more exotic Astramon to catch. But also, you might run into a Miho. You might also run into a variant Siren or a variant uh, legendary, uh, you know, Stormbeak or whatever you want to call him. What's his uh, Boltwing? Uh, so that's another reason why you might want to run Arya Lake. The more runs you do, your higher chances are of finding a legendary. Higher chances are to find a Miho or a uh, Water Siren. And if they're variant, again, that's extra Astro Gems. Uh, Arya Lake as well, you'll catch some random variant Coteen or Cotines or Slimes or whatever the hell this fish is, the Gups. Um, you might actually end up getting a variant um, Bat, you know, from just running... Um, this particular stage. Also, again, the lats. You know, the lats will give you 10 Astro Gems, the Gilgabats, whatever, what do, you, what do you call it here? Kilobats, you'll get 10 Astro Gems. The slimes only give you 5, but it's still worth catching. 5 Astro Gems is 5 Astro Gems. So, just something to keep in mind. Those are the two best stages that I think that, you know, particularly a lot of people should farm, especially during Capture Fests, because you'll be collecting uh, the, um, what are they called here? They're, they're essentially uh, materials that you can use to uh, create your light super stone. Uh, so we're just going to go to the laboratory here. And then if you go to craft, you click on your light stone, it's these. So this one here is found in Mirage Ruins and it's found on normal, hard, or extreme. And I tell everybody to just run the Mirage Ruins on normal. Because if you run it on extreme, you'll actually be fighting... Uh, to capture or to find the um, uh, white sand here along with, uh, I forget what other, I forget what other material you also get from there. Uh, oh, that's right, it's it's uh, these um, uh, Statue of Times. Uh, so you'll actually catch those as well, you know, in the Mirage Ruins. So I tell everybody to just run the normal, you'll catch a lot of those. You need a hundred of them. Uh, per super stone so you know you think okay a hundred I do a hundred runs in Mirage Ruins I get like 200 of these um, and then you don't have to repeat that dungeon again for the uh, light super stone so that's the reason why same thing with the uh, jaded pearls here I tell everybody to just go ahead and run uh, the uh, Arya Lake because you can run that in normal mode and still find those in uh, the normal uh, runs and you'll again still be able to capture the Mihos, the uh, legendaries, or the sirens, you know. And believe it or not, Siren is a very common Astramon to find in Arya Lake. And I actually lost count on my spreadsheet how many times I actually encountered her. Um, I don't think I even wrote it down. I think, yeah, I only wrote down the variant ones, but I actually caught her like hundreds of times. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and go over here to my inventory and we're going to release some mons just to show new players how you can essentially do this or if you're you know a player who's mid mid game right now and like you know you're like okay how the hell what does he mean by releasing astromons this is what i mean so essentially here's some some sirens here that i caught and there's two two variants you know i, I kept a lot of these uh, just to show you guys like you know kind of like you know the ones that you can encounter the variant ones i actually like to save because i can use them uh in the rebirth um but just I'll go to that afterwards. I'll just do this here for now. So these are the, um, oh, what is this guy's name? The Radis or the uh, Radioth. Um, he can be found normally around like the Glacial Plains area. Um, and he's really easy to catch and you can encounter a lot of them. But essentially what you do is you click on your five Astromon here. Let's see if I can release some Monkikis as well. I only release five at a time. And I'm telling you guys, I've done this billions and billions of times already. And if you do more than five, you end up getting doo-doo, kaka. So the best that I recommend you guys is to do three at a time. So we'll do three there. So we got 60 gold and five fruits. Or if you do five at a time, sometimes you can get eggs, gold, and astrogems. Got 10. 
So as you guys can see there, you know, releasing 20 or 30 or 40 at a time, sometimes it, your rates are not that good. Um, and that's just from what I've found from just, you know, trial and error, just releasing mons. But if I do five here, let's see if we do it again. We got three eggs. So those eggs right there are pretty valuable because you can essentially use those same eggs to try to catch uh, or to summon more Astromon, which you can essentially count as a free summon. Um, of course, they do still have the chance of being a four star and a five star, and we'll open some of those up here in a little bit to show you guys. So I'm just going to release these other ones here. And we'll see what we get. And we got another two eggs. So really easy right there. As long as you guys can see, you can run the story mode, capture mons. I'm going to save that um, Wood Vivian. I'm going to Evo 3 my sixth Wood Vivian. Um, here's the other one. All right, so let's see if I do two. Let's do three this time. See what we get. Now, it doesn't always happen, but, you know, from releasing Astromon, sometimes you can get uh, Astro Gems. So just keep that in mind. And I'm going against the law there, and I only released two where I should have done three. But again, see these variants? One, two, three. I'm going to save that Pino. This is actually a normal Pinolo. The P normal Pinolo um, Capture Fest was just on, and I ended up getting a few uh, variants just from normal trades. Uh, let's see. Do I have any others to release? I'm pretty sure I do. But anyway, so that's essentially what you can do. I'm going to box these two. I need I need more room. Everybody knows that we can always use more room, but we definitely need more room in Wild Super League. All right, so for those eggs that we just got from releasing the Astromons, you'll they'll come here to your uh, incubator. Um, and it costs 100000 to pop up in 10. Um, and I'm just going to do it. Um, but just know that it's a 3 to 5 star egg. So... Essentially, you can get a lot of nat 5s from here, and I'll tell you right now, I definitely do. And if you join my Discord, you'll see I usually post screenshots of the nat 5s that I pull. And th there you go. Look at that. That was a free wood nat 5 Shiba. Uh, talk about luck, you know. And, and again, guys, it's it's really good to just, you know, release those Astromons every month. And that's another way that you can get more food for more Astromon that you can catch throughout the month. And we got a Fire Banshee too. So, you know, just another way to get more Astromons every month. Uh, just to either f feed for the Draka or feed for any other particular uh, mons that you guys may need. But again, you know, it's proven right there, guys. You can definitely pull Nat 5s from the free eggs. And it's just whether or not you're lucky enough to do it or not. I'm going to save that Wood Fibian, but we're going to go ahead and release these uh, other five here. Just to see if maybe our luck changes and we get some Astro Gems. Uh, it didn't, but we got 30,000 gold and two more eggs. So that's exactly what you want to do nowadays is you want to essentially um, keep catching Astromon so that you can release them. And then uh, hopefully you get some gems from releasing them. Um, you know, get some more eggs, some more gold that you can use to open more um, eggs. Uh, and essentially also you can use that gold for sliming. So that's essentially the best way right now uh, that I have found uh, to catch and make more astromon or more astrogems. So we're going to do it again one more time. Power lock's probably gone. But there's always a chance to pull more Nat Force. Um, and this is again another way that you can get some Nat Force um, to feed. Oh, that's a variant Hana. Cool. Look at that. See? So it, it is possible to get variants as well from the eggs. Um, my luck is probably just unreal. Um, but, um, you know, that's just me, I guess. But okay, we're going to go ahead and store that one there. And we're going to release another uh, five. I don't really need any of these mons. And I was kind of hoping that I'd find at least a couple astrogens, but I'm not popping up. All right, so we got one egg and 30. Let's see if we got three here. Yes. All right, so I'll release these three. Hopefully there's something in here. Uh, one more egg. So as you guys can see, you can basically keep repeating this process of capturing mons during the story um, and then uh, releasing them. Um, and then, of course, you get some eggs and then you pop open some more eggs so there's just another way to continue on and i'm kind of hoping that we get at least uh a couple astro gems here all right cool see we got another uh not four there to feed um i don't need any shuras i already have most of my shuras built or at least one of each so that one right there will go straight to the uh, rebirth 
um, at the end of the month, whenever the next uh, Rebirth month is announced, of course. Uh, I don't waste my Nat 4s, but as you guys can see, I have quite a few that I usually throw in here. Um, I right, have my Light Shura. I do have another Water or Dark Shura that I could probably build with that one, I guess, but right now I'm mainly just, you know, saving my my mons so that I can get some extra gems. If you guys do 15 ast nat 4s, if you rebirth them in, will net you in an extra 300 astro gems. So keep that in mind. It's just another way to get uh, some more astro gems. Let's see if we do the 5 method here again, and then we'll do the 3 method and see what we get. Alright, we got we ran out of luck now. That nat 5 took all of our luck. Alright, so we got one more egg back. Um, but essentially, that's it. So, again, don't release more than like 5 at a time. Look at that, I did one and I ended up getting 100,000 back. So that's exactly covers me opening up another uh, 10 more eggs from the um, secret eggs here. So keep that in mind. So that's essentially the best way that I have found so far to make Astro Gems, guys, is to just run the story mode again on the uh, particular stages that you're looking to farm. Like for me, I'm trying to farm a lot of uh, Dark Stones now, so I changed them up. Uh, usually I farm Arya Lake and Mirage Ruins on normal. Those are the two that I farm the most. Uh, but if I'm leveling an Astromon, if you are above level 40, I recommend Terrestrial Rift number 11. Um, and um, Deserted Battlefield as well gives you some extra, um, what are they called, the, the leaves. You need like this flower to create the, the white uh, stone, the light stone. So I can usually run uh, the uh, stage 8 here, the gold bonus um, stage. Um, and I can run that pretty quickly in like around like 30 seconds or so, 32 seconds with my three Drakas. Uh, so that's another place that a lot of you higher players can go to if you, um, you know, are at that level 40 or above and you're looking, okay, maybe I could use some extra gold as well as doing some more experience, um, you know, run that stage. The Sleeping War Swords, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, it is. Sleeping Swords number eight on the uh, Desert Battlefield is another place to farm lightstone materials. Um, but again, stage number eight really quick, just Dark Mons. Um, whereas if you do 13, these two um, cactuses, Piotums or whatever they're called, these guys, Piotes, uh, these guys actually have uh, morale boost and petrification for two turns. So they'll stun you really quick. So it's not an efficient place to, storm, to, to farm for experience. Um, but if you farm the uh, gold bonus here, it's just the coffers, the goldricks, and the um, phantos here. Really easy mons to kill. Well, the phantos is a sapper and a tack down. Yeah, really easy. And then this guy's what? Fatigue? Yeah. So run uh, Deserted Battlefield on Extreme if you're above level 40, or on Extreme you want to run uh, Stage 11 of the Terrestrial Rift if you're above level 40. Uh, again, for newer players, you're going to want to stick to um, Mirage Ruins on Hard, uh, from Normal all the way to Hard or Extreme. Um, and then once you get past level 20, go into Pagos Coast or Pagos Coast, whatever you want to call it, and just run uh, number six on uh, the experience bonus quest here on extreme, hard, or normal, and just keep running it until you get to level 30, at which point you can essentially move out to Star Sanctuary or Sky Falls, Slumbering City, Glacial Plains, and whatnot. Um, but those are the best places to farm for experience for new players as well as catching Astromons. And again, every legendary catch is 50. If it's variant, it's 100. Rare is just 20. Uh, Demona's... Again, I recommend a lot of players, uh, let's see if I actually had a uh, sheet here. Yeah, new player mons. So for new players, I was telling you guys to basically raise uh, two water monas and two water mihos because if you raise one, uh, you know two of those, you can essentially finish uh, golems B8 and B10. Um, I always tell people to go to Mirage Ruins, another place to farm here is gonna be the Wood Seedler which is really, really good for uh, the uh, Water Colossus as well as Dragon, or not Dragon's Golems B10, because uh, he is a double zapper. So, you know, keep that in mind. Water Miho, she is also a double zapper, and she's actually really good. Um, let's see if I can get her to her skill books. It's a 100% chance zap for two turns. So really good skill, especially with the 20% boot or the extra 2,000 
damage boost to sap it's like an extra two percent uh, so it's another really good skill to have for golems and then the five star skill is also sap uh, this can be skill book to 80 percent for two turns uh, so just keep that in mind and of course her variant skill is uh, resistance up so really good so you could build two water mihos and two seedlers and you got yourself a uh, golems b10 team um, it might be a little iffy at first but believe it or not if you build them just pure on hp 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 or hp hp defense they can uh complete the uh golems b10 uh, so i'll probably make a video of that and i also wanted to showcase the flora so keep that you know on the list of videos to watch um, but i'm gonna try to cut this short guys i know i've kind of ran on, ranted on for a lot here but if you're level 1 through 20 and you're trying to get some astromons and astrogems run mirage ruins on 9 and mirage ruins level 4 so for levels 20 through 30 pagos coast 6 and magma crags 4 level 30 through 40 glacial plains 8 and essentially the same stage for both and then level 40 to 65 terrestrial rift um, those are probably going to be the best areas per level to make uh, gold as well as leveling uh, and it'll get you to level 40 quickly you know get you through your hero's contract as well as your light and dark contracts pretty quickly uh, particularly because once you've raised you know two water monas you can essentially go through a lot of those stages uh, that I previously mentioned here before if you built your two water mihos you can go through a lot of those stages there uh, the seedler again same thing you can go through a lot of those stages as well um, let's see what else have I covered uh, b7 and b8 um, b7 I believe is water and b8 is fire so you know if you're wanting to do just golems b8 as a new player you're going to need four monas instead of you know miho and a mona although i recommend new players to just raise two water mihos and two monas uh, another good monster to get for either one of those is going to be the wood miho she's going to be really good for b7 and b10 the wood miho has defense down and a stun so if you don't have a wave clearer the defense down and the stun are actually really good especially if you get her in a siphon set once you start doing your dragons uh, she can help you farm really quickly if you don't have a radioth light light radioth uh, or the light radis um, or the uh, dark uh, flora that was just out from the lupin dungeon so if you don't have any one of those mons you can definitely um, you know substitute them from two uh, monas and then two water mihos or a wood uh, miho and then of course the wood seedler uh, so essentially for new players if you're looking for two good mons to run golems b10 it'll be two water mihos and two seedlers with one of them as a variant uh, to give you some extra resistance against the dark uh, monster and i'll do a video showcasing that particular team here in a couple of weeks uh, the water miho or the mihos just had their super evolution so if you haven't done it yet you know just go through your story mode here uh, aria lake you know mirage ruins phantom forest lunar valley most of those will give you your water uh, uh, super evolution stone i think sea caves is the other um, level that you have to run really easy levels to, to farm you know to get your your mo your uh, water miho to a super evil so just definitely do that um i'm not really going to go into the uh, dungeon farming too much starstone dungeon fairly easy you'll actually get uh, a lot of the star stones just by doing the uh, daily missions here um, so you know when you go through your expeditions um, all you got to do is click on the astromon association go to your expedition you know click on those particular mons that give you bonuses for that place and then just send them in that uh, particular expedition they'll come back with star stones medium small and large uh, along with other materials that you'll need to craft um, your um, relics and trinkets so let's see what else didn't i cover yet um so as a recap here i'll end the video here it's going to be do your your ads get your energy refill your ticket refill your gold refill your astrogem refill um then of course uh run your dailies run your um monthly quests your um uh, hold on a second my Nox here is crashing one second all right sorry about that guys i crashed uh, but anyways yeah go ahead and do your bingo every single day you know you'll get some gold you'll get your 100 astrogems every monday 
Um, you only need to be playing the game basically for like three hours and you'll end up getting all the bingo pieces. Uh, make sure that you send your energy to your friends every single day to get that extra 50 energy. Um, log Login event, same thing. All you got to do is log in. You'll get an extra 150 energy. And then of course, login event also actually gives you um, some extra bonuses here, like the Holy Gleam, the uh, Light and Dark Egg. Um, and, um, you know, essentially there's there's other places of that you can get Astro Gems that I didn't include, uh, aside from just the Rebirth as well. Uh, sometimes you'll get uh, free Astro Gems from uh, gifts. Sometimes you'll get free Astro Gems from, uh, you know, just running the stages, actually. If you run a stage, you know, if you run the, the, the three-star stage here, you actually still have, uh, or the uh, normal stages, you still have a chance of getting one Astro Gem for completing that stage. So that's another way to get Astro Gems as well. Just, uh, But from what I've gathered, guys, just from my, my little sheet here that I've kept track here for the last, like, you know, two months since the um, nerf to sliming happened, uh, I have been able to get anywhere between 13,000 to, like, 18,000 gems efficiently every month. Uh, given that I'm running the storyline, give you know, for the majority of my energy, uh, and given that I'm doing my arena battles and uh, as well as my uh, monthly quests and daily quests. Uh, so again, guys, 16,000 is how much I made in the last like, you know, three weeks or so of uh, March. Um, so something definitely achievable to get anywhere between, anywhere between 13,000 and 16,000 for a lot of you guys. Uh, I'm not, again, that number there does not include my clan battles or nor does it include my uh, arena here. Um, and if you guys want to see my spreadsheet, uh, join my Discord. Let me know. I'll drop you a link to the spreadsheet, uh, and it'll be wiped empty clean, and you guys can basically use it to, uh, you know, track your gem and your gold. Uh, and I would actually love it if you guys emailed me back uh, this particular sheet, because then I can actually compile data as to how much you guys are also accounting for every single month, which will give us better numbers. But right now, just for myself testing it out, I'm coming in at 16,000 Astro Gems or so a month just from catching Astromons in the story, which I maybe perhaps will say that maybe they did increase the rate of, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, for botters, unfortunately, I'm going to say that they're still winning here. I know that 433 kind of nerfed sliming to stop the botters, but honestly, I don't think it's doing much because the uh, rates of the Astromons here are still there, and that means that a lot of those botters are still running in to basically run the story, to get their Astromons, to release them, and get Astro Gems. Um, it, I think it's stupid. Uh, the, the, I think that the sliming was like a real nerf uh, as far as like free to play goes, but I don't think that it was like crazy, crazy bad. I did kind of overestimate it a little, a little bit in the beginning thinking like, oh, it's not going to impact us that much, but now I actually am seeing it a big impact, especially in clan summons and Heroes Fest summons. You know, a lot of my friends basically essentially are not playing as much anymore because they can't get as many Astro Gems. And as you guys know, it takes years to get ahead in this game unless you're pulling in real money into it. Um, but if you're like me and you joined before the nerf and you were able to, you know, slime, uh, you know, then you, at least you have a little bit of a leg up on a lot of the new players. But for new players, again, this is a great way for you guys to kind of get some more Astro Gems every month. Just do your arena, do your uh, dailies, do, you know, do your daily ads. It's basically free um, energy, free Astro Gems that you can get just by logging in. And then, of course, uh, you can do your Tower of Chaos. You know, you do Tower of Chaos, that's an extra... Uh, let me see how many, I think it's like 400 or so if you do Tower of Chaos. I don't know if I put it in here. Um, it's somewhere in here. Uh, but anyways, that's something else that you can do to get some extra uh, Astro Gems. And you'll get, uh, let's see how many. You can get four Gleams a month from the Arena. You get three Holy Gleams, one from the Daily Login, one from the Tower of Chaos, and one from the Monthly Login. Uh, or for completing your 20, 20 quests, basically, for the uh, for the month. Um, and then, uh, let's see, um, oh yeah, that's right, eggs, you'll get uh, 100 eggs for free, essentially, and what I mean by 100 eggs is actually the uh, summon su summons that you get uh, for free every single day. Um, the reason why it amounts to 100 is because every third day, you actually get one for free, or one summon for free. So if we go to our special shop here... You'll get your three free daily summons, and then you'll get this one here for free every three days. So every three days for 30 days gives you 10, 
eggs, and then uh, if you do three days for 30 days, or three eggs for 30 days, you'll get 90 eggs. So it's about 100 eggs that you can get for free. So again, guys, if you catch Astromon and you release them, you'll get some uh, eggs back. Uh, which you can again keep on your incubator here and open them up and, and basically get some more nat 4s and nat 5s. Uh, the nat 4s you can do uh, rebirths every month and if you do uh, if you basically feed in 15 nat 4s you'll get 300 astrogens back. Um, you know on the third wave you'll end up getting a light and dark egg uh, so I suggest you guys to save your nat 4s per um, Astromon such as Thor who's really good and you know if you need him that's the best way to spend some of your nat force um, again guys I kind of want to keep it short this is really long you're more than welcome to reach out to me uh, on discord I'll drop the uh, permanent link for you guys in the comment section down below it shouldn't expire um, but go ahead and contact me let me know what you guys want to do if you want to borrow this list and keep track for your own purposes or at least let me know how much you uh, made at the end of the month whether or not I'm right I'm wrong uh, I would love to see a lot of you guys uh, try out this list and uh, hopefully we can all continue to be free to play whales um, at least until 433 decides to do another nerf although I hope that they actually increase the sliming from 4,000 to 8,000 astrogems a month because uh, it would really help out a lot of the lower level um, members and a lot of the um, you know members who have been playing for a while who can continue to uh, basically rum summon on both Heroes Fest and Clan Fest. Um, right now Clan Festival is the better festival to summon on for new players. You'll get your golden egg every uh, basically 6,000 astrogems. Um, and then you'll get some presents every, uh, I believe it's uh, 2,400 astrogems. So if you're a new player, Heroes or Clan Fest is basically your main one. Heroes Fest is going to be out of your reach. Uh, for mid to high end players, you guys are going to be basically going after the Heroes Festival uh, to get yourself some Titans Mons, which will, of course, allow you to do a little bit better on the. Um, um, clan rewards so that you guys can basically end up getting a little bit more rewards every month so that's just something to consider um, if you guys need any more help just go ahead and uh, leave a comment in the section down below in the comment section down below or feel free to message me on discord um, and I will catch you guys on the next video take it easy guys